Yeah, I can speak to them because each of them represents a category. For example, um, the lady there, the husband was abducted, and up now he's missing.
those who have been able to get out of the Jewish centers have reported that there are still hundreds of victims there, many of them NUP supporters. Now, the case in point is Masereka, who was recently released from the SMI facility, and author Kakwenza Jidawashaisha, who was held for several weeks in the Joshua facility in Nigeria. Both mentioned that they, were, that they left many other supporters of NUP at these facilities being subjected to horrendous torture. Madam Chair, first of all, even when we try to record these victims, it is sometimes difficult because every person who comes will bring a fresh list of the people that they have left there. It will be remembered that in 2019, the Human Rights Committee of Parliament attempted to visit the safe houses and was blocked. In our earlier interaction with this committee on March 31st, we presented a list of some of the abducted supporters. It is unfortunate that we have not seen the report of this committee since then. Right after the election, we were invited to the Human Rights Committee and we gave a detail of some of the people who have been abducted and after we have not seen a report or any action being taken. Further, the leader of the opposition in this parliament has also, on several occasions, presented a list of missing persons and other categories of violations, but there has been no serious action from the relevant authorities. As of today, as I speak, these are some of our supporters who are abducted by security authorities and are still missing. Tsvaramajan Bosco was picked up from Gayaza Road on 3rd June 2019, and up to now he's missing. Mr. Damila John was abducted on gunpoint in Chiseka Market on 21st November 2020. Police confirmed that he had been arrested. The High Court issued a habeas corpus order for his release, but up to now he's missing. Madam Chairperson, I've come with the wife. Damila John, uh, 52 years of age, he was picked from uh, Chiseka by armed men, and up to now, no one knows where he is. Babas Moses, aka yeah. Kawaja, was picked up from Chiseka on 7th December 2020. And Almoso Vicent was affected from Bolivar Market on 1st December 2020. For the same story as uh, Nalmoso. Zimula Dennis was abducted from a border border stage in Chebando in November 2020. I have not included the, the, names of their, the numbers of their family members, but they are available upon request because I know this is a public judgment. I don't want to endanger their family members by making those contacts open. Remember, Mustafa was abducted from the border border state in Chevalu in November 2020. Michael Semudu was abducted from, from Monaco in Kasumi on the 1st November 2020. Hassan Mugiru abducted from Kawala in November 2020. Mwereza Zagaston abducted in November 2020. Asumba George abducted from Chotela District on 19th January 2021. Together with a group of 18 other NUP supporters who were later dumped in swamps and other areas. Wangolo Shafiq was abducted from Nasa Na Chebano on 3rd December. Muhammad Takanata abducted from Nama Ojolo, Kono District in November 2020 and missing up to now. Sempi Jarida was picked up from Champisi Subcourt in Kono District in November 2020 and he's, he's missing up to now. Now, these are just a few of those whose contacts we have and we've done some preliminary investigations. But I'm chairperson, in most cases, the family members have even reported police. For example, they went up to court, got the happiest corpus order, have reported police, have moved everywhere, and police initially confirmed that they had it. In fact, the list which General Museli read of the part been arrested, his name was also mentioned. So up now we wonder why such people are not produced before courts of law or, or released unconditionally. Um, I, I wish to go to another category of extrajudicial killings. Honorable members, Act 22 1 of our Constitution guarantees the right to life and provides that no person shall be deprived of life intentionally except the execution of the sentence passed in a fair trial by a court of competent jurisdiction to respect criminal matters and confirmed by highest appellate court. Unfortunately, many Ugandans continue to live uh, to lose lives extrajudiciously by security authorities. Ugandans who have been murdered in cold blood for supporting my identifying with NUP are very many. In November 2020, Madam Chair there was a massacre in this country. A marching out of protests that took place when our president, Honorable Chagrin, was violently arrested in Muka District. Today, there has been no investigation into this matter, despite repeated demands by us and the international community. The officers who murdered the people of Uganda have not been brought to book. The families of the deceased were promised compensation, but this has not been done. Many of the families of the deceased can no longer afford to take their children to school because the breadwinners uh, 
were murdered by security agencies. Prior to the events of November, several other Ugandans were killed. Today I've come with a gentleman who lost his brother. Mr. Uh, he lost his brother in, 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 in that November 2020. So that's one of the categories that we're talking about. No conversation, no investigation, nothing. Now, prior to the events of November, several other Ugandans were killed for another crime. But they can find good and supporting our party and the proper movement. These include Richard Kenya, who was deliberately run over by a police truck on 24th of February 2020. The police claim that the cameras on that day were not working, even when it was clear from the onlookers that Rita was deliberately targeted because she was putting on a four power shot. Daniel Cheyenne was shot dead on 25th of February 2020 by one Pfizer proposal, an LD officer. Even when we secured a video footage clearly showing how this crime was committed, there was no further punishment or investigation into the matter. Charles Muchabwe was run over by a police vehicle in Mavia on 18th July 2020, no investigation. Senator Frank Kalibala, a member of our security team, was run over by a military truck, number 84DF 2382 on 27th December 2020, and today there has been no conclusive investigation in this matter. The National Duty Platform notes and condemns extrajudicial murders of Ugandans who were not necessarily related to NUP, but who were killed extrajudiciously, and these include Isaac Senyange, commonly known as Zebra Mando, who was shot dead by security operatives. Despite by the admission by the state of his murder, there has been no accountability for this crime. The continued killing of Muslim clerics, very recently Sheikh Abbas Chirebu, who was shot dead on handcuffs, is of great concern to us. At least 12 terror suspects were killed in investigations, including cases where on Lucas clearly stated that the victims were unarmed or even not resisting or evading arrests. It should also be remembered, Madam Chairperson and members, that during the enforcement of COVID 19 regulations in 2020, several Ugandans were murdered in cold blood, and today there has been no conclusive investigation. These include Eric Mutasiga, Ed Chia, in Kono, who was shot dead by the police. Then on the cementer, a lady in Kasese, who was shot dead by a PDF soldier, Margaret Nanyunga, an 80-year-old woman who died after LD personnel raided her home in Chengela town, Wilbur Kauno, a resident of Dhaka, who was shot dead by the police, Robert Senyonga, a border rider in Njemu, who succumbed wounds at the heads of LD personnel, Ibrahim Namulondo, Charles Sanga, Vincent Serudi, and others who were killed during the enforcement of COVID regulations. Now, what concerns us is the unwillingness or inability of state agencies to carry out investigations and bring culprits to book. The third issue, Madam Chair, is the military trial of civilians. The trial of civilians in military courts is illegal and unconstitutional. It goes against the constitutional guarantee in 20, Article 28 of our constitution for every Uganda to be subjected to a fair, speedy, and public hearing before an independent and impartial court or tribunal established by law. It also goes against Uganda's international human rights obligations, and the United Nations Human Rights Council has taken the view that the practice of trying civilians in military courts is not compatible with obligations under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, specifically Article 14, and Uganda has ratified the ICCPR. In several of its observations and recommendations to countries, the Human Rights Committee has taken the general view that the jurisdiction of military courts should be confined military offenses committed by military personnel. Since November 2020, many NUP supporters have been subjected to military trials even when they are civilians. The charges have been largely trumped up. The motivation has been to hold these Ugandans for longer periods without availing them an opportunity to apply for bail in civilian courts. It is well known that military courts in Uganda are under the command and control of PDF command structure. It is not possible for accused persons, more so prisoners of courses, conscious to get a free and fair trial from those courts. Moreover, most NUP supporters found themselves in military courts for allegedly putting on red berets. In most cases, as I can testify before this committee, after the abduction, they would be forced to put on berets or even military uniforms and their pictures taken. Then they would be arraigned before the unit trial committee before being transferred to the division court marshal at Kachini or the general court marshal at Makiye. Madam Chair, I think I need to explain it to this. Most of the, our people who were abducted, they would just find people in houses, take them to military courts, force them to put on military uniforms, take their pictures, and subject them to military trials. In the most bizarre case, 
49 of our supporters were kicked off the campaign trail on December 30, 2020, charged before the military court of being found in possession of four bullets and two magazines on 3rd of January. You can imagine, they were arrested on 30th December and then they charged it right, but they were found in magazines on 3rd of January. They would spend close to six months in different military and civilian prisons over such a ridiculous charge. And today I've come with Eddie Mufu, Eddie Sebat Mufu, as one of the victims who was held for six months, then tried by the military court. No, no, he died for you that These ones were charged with possession of bullets by the military court. That, the people who were forced to put on a military attack, they are the majority, but they are not here today. And they are not here. Some of them have actually not been allowed to access the premises because they were a little bit more than this. To date, we have over 100 supporters of NUP still stuck in different prisons being fried by military courts. Many of them have not even had an opportunity to be brought to court since they were arrested in 2020. You can imagine, Madam Chair, people who were arrested in 2020 up to now, some of them have not been brought to the court. Now, the other issue is torture. Article 24 guarantees the freedom from torture, cruel and cruel treatment. Unfortunately, this has remained on paper as many Ugandans are subjected to horrendous incidents of torture and brutality. Almost all NUP supporters who have been arrested or abducted have been subjected to torture for damage to personal members. The forms of torture include waterboarding, electrocution, use of pliers or wires to plug all parts of, the bo of their bodies, beatings, denial of food and water, denial of sleep, hanging, use of boiling water to burn parts of the body, etc. And if you had an opportunity to talk with Maseyeka, we'll tell you what he, has, he went through. There are hundreds of cases of torture that have been reported to us from reception. Even where cases have been filed, it has been very difficult for victims to get justice. Some of the victims of torture include our very president, Honorable Chagwani Sentamu, who was severely beaten, Honorable Francis Zake, and others. A detailed list of some of the, of the many torture victims can be availed once again in this committee so that the committee interacts with them and turn about recommendations that this committee interacts with these torture victims. Now, some of the outstanding cases this committee may want to interact with. Me, uh, one of Segawa Ronald, Masereka Samuel, Rumu Ronald, Kaoya Abdurahab, Nicholas Magezi, Ruzike Masuki, Mutambuka Emmanuel, Yasin Gusurwa, Kasim Nigade, John, Sol Sel John, John Bosco Selum Kuma, Male Musa, Kuma Kajimur, Nedevi PTC. These are some of the outstanding cases that uh, this committee uh, may manifest itself in. The nation show will shock the torture marks of suspects in the General Katumba Amara assassination attempt. The torture of suspects during interrogation seems to be the unwritten official policy of the government. I'm sorry to say this, but I found here the general representative saying that it's not their policy. But if the head of state, the commander in chief, comes out every day to say that this is not our policy, and yet the people in command continue doing these actions for the benefit of his regime, then it seems to us that this is the unofficial policy of the government, which is unfortunate. Several government officials have publicly condemned torture and yet torture continues unabated, and the objective of most of the torture is regime perpetration. Of great concern to us is the injection, Madam Chairperson, of our people with unknown substances, either upon arrest or upon release. Our people, and uh, unfortunately, but Masereka was injected with substances, the Jima Moses was, at least from their reports, uh, when they took the name. And many others. Then, upon abduction, they inject them with substances which knock them out, and later on when they come out, they are again injected. Most of the victims, uh, I talked about, the long term of these substances is not yet known, and we hope that this...